That's ridiculous. Because we're now in September, that means that my normal writing schedule will start on Monday. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, things are going to be a bit different than they were earlier in the year. So my old writing schedule used to be I'd write Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. My wife would be around on Thursday. So I'd do lots of editing and marketing kind of tasks. And on Friday, write again. My wife's day has changed. So she will now be having days off on Tuesdays. And so it's making me think that maybe Monday she'll be dedicated to something like marketing and editing, those kind of tasks, and then having those three days as solid first draft writing days. I don't know yet what's going to happen. It might just be that I throw myself into the writing on the Monday. I just find it very hard to write first draft stuff when there's somebody else around. Maybe that's something that I just need to get over. So if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that I've been telling myself not to start new projects until I've cleared the backlog. Well, I have. (laughs) So this past week, I wasn't really sure what I was going to write. I think I got to the end of doing my third draft of Justice just a little bit faster than I expected. And if you recall, I released a book last year that was the first book in the Ravenglass Chronicles called The Fool. Now, this was a short novelette. This was a free introduction to the series. And so I used this to get people interested. And because it was book zero, because The Fool is tarot card zero, Amazon would not let me include this book as part of the series. So that was really frustrating to me. And what I ended up doing was taking the text from The Fool and putting it as the first part of The Magician. So book one, The Magician, is basically a combination of The Fool and The Magician, which has actually worked out well because that's brought it out of the short reads category on Amazon. So, you know, it's a nice, meaty novella length rather than being on the short end. So that's good. I'm pleased that I did that. And I think that The Magician ends on a stronger note than The Fool did originally. So what I've done this past week is I've actually written a story called The Fool. And so this is a prequel, and it's a proper prequel. Try saying that several times. Whereas The Fool was basically a first act in this longer arc, The Fool is actually a proper prequel it's set about nine months before the events of the main series and it's a nice novella length and i basically hammered through the first draft of it this week my wife and son went to center parks for a day with some friends so i just stayed at home because the idea of spending a day in a crazy busy swimming pool without peripheral vision isn't much fun so i just focused on my work and i did a 16 hour day that's not an exaggeration i got up at 4:45. And I think I finished working at about 10 at night. And in that as well, I had a conversation with a mentor. So I have been getting help to improve my author career from a very successful author. So this has been really useful, really great. Got a lot of great advice. And I think I spoke to him after about 14 hours worth of dictation. So I think my voice was a little bit ropey. And then on Friday, I started with the edits and then went back to bed. So I got up at five, did edits for a while, did about 3,000 words, and then I went back to bed and I was completely wiped out, absolutely exhausted. So I'm not making a habit of these crazy long days, it's just that I knew that I had this big window where I wouldn't have to do things like sort my son's breakfast, sort out his tea, and so, you know, I managed to get this story done. First draft complete, really pleased with the story. We find out how Cat and Hansel first met, we get hints at some things that will play out further in the story. I mean, this will be something that I'll give to people who sign up to my newsletter. I'll send a copy to people who are already on my newsletter. So it's just a bonus. And it's something that I've not had in terms of marketing because with my Wasteland series, I've got a book called Addict of the Wasteland, which really helped draw people into the series. So giving that book away for free and then using joint promotions and things like that to get people interested in the series get them onto my mailing list, that kind of thing, so I could tell them about the Wasteland series. And I had that with the original version of The Fool, but obviously because of the almighty Amazon and their unwillingness to bend on the issue of the series number. So now I've got something, anyway, that I can use to attract new readers. And of course, I've already got a cover, so even better. So next week, my intention is to start work on The Hanged Man, which is book 12 in the Ravenglass Chronicles. I'm pretty sure that by the end of the week, I should have a first draft. That's my intention anyway. And the week after that, my dad's funeral is on the Thursday. Now, I've said before I wasn't sure whether I was going. I am, just for the day. So I'm literally going down to Wolverhampton for the funeral and then travelling back up to Morecambe on the day. It's more to be there as a shoulder for my sisters and my mother and just to draw a line 
under the whole thing, if that makes sense. So I've been trying to think of what I should do when we're getting our kitchen fitted, which is going to be mid-September, whatever that means. So I think that's going to be probably the third week. So again, going back to the not starting new projects, I have started another non-fiction project, but I have put another non-fiction project on hold. And so what I wanted to do is a book called The Stoic Writer. So I've been reading a lot of Stoicism. When I did my philosophy degree in, gosh, 2000 to 2004, I was really interested in Stoicism. And so I'm actually going to show how using Stoicism you can have a successful author mindset. So after I finished getting the full finished and doing those edits and, you know, had my going back to bed thing, when I got up, I gathered lots of quotes by people like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and things like that, things that I thought would resonate with authors. And so I'm going to combine them together with my own commentaries and show how this ancient wisdom, you know, this is stuff from 2000 years ago, how this stuff is still relevant today, how it's important, how stoicism is actually perfect for times like these where there's a lot of uncertainty and chaos. So I'm really looking forward to writing that. I'm going to do that in the week when I've got someone working in my house so I can't dictate. So I'm just going to be writing on the keyboard, writing commentaries. And it's going to be bitty as well. So I might write 300 words about a quote. And so if I do get distracted, do get disturbed, it's not going to diminish my flow particularly. So that's my plan for that week. That should be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a different way to how I've done non-fiction books before, which is basically me just doing a bit of a brain splurge and then arranging it once I've got it out of my head. This one's going to be a bit more focused. It's not going to be academic, but it's going to require more of a academic approach, I think is how I'd put it. But obviously the style will not be academic at all, and it's going to be written for a general audience. Hopefully it'll inspire some people because I love stoicism. I think it's great. And it's really helped me with my mindset, my self-discipline and things like that. So I think it's an important book that I'm looking forward to write. So as well as that, I've also compiled the Black Death series that is now off with the collaborator. So it's with him now. He needs to add about 5,000 words to each book. So this will be expanding his scenes or adding new scenes. He'll be doing a pass on mine, I think. So it's out of my hands for a while. Hopefully it'll get done in the not too distant future. Would really like to get two Ravenglass books drafted this next month. And so hopefully when it comes to October and I get these books back, we'll be at a point where we won't be too far from releasing. So stay tuned. Hopefully it's not too far away. So I was really excited this week to see that one of my favourite bands have released a new album for the first time in, I think it's like 13 years. So Tool have a new album out. It's really good. Really good. So if you are a fan of progressive metal check it out because it's a great album it sounds a bit of a cliche or a bit cheesy or even a bit pretentious but they're not songs they're like musical experiences they're like journeys you know they're they're 12 13 minute long and they feel like stories that they've got structure to them that doesn't feel like normal songs and it's almost like this hypnotic thing that you get with listening to tool so yeah really good i think it's the best album they've done since anima so Highly recommend that. I finished reading Blood Songs by Anthony Ryan. Really enjoyed that book. Again, another highly recommended title. This was the epic fantasy, kind of grimdark style with a religious military order. I like how it developed. I like the ambiguity of the characters. You know, there was no black and white. There was no good guys, no bad guys. It was just a lot of flawed people trying to get through life. And I've also started a book called Nevernight, which is another grimdark fantasy. This is one about a 10-year-old girl who gets trained as an assassin. So this is another grim, really grim, gritty fantasy story. It's set in a city that is the skeleton of a god or a giant or something, which is a really cool world building. And the narration is, I don't know, it's kind of meta in a way. It makes references to other fantasy stories. It pokes fun at fantasy conventions, the references and lets you know when it's going against the hero's journey, story structure and things like that. So it's very clever. It's gritty as hell. A lot of bad language, a lot of gore. You know, I've just listened to a scene where the main character gets her arm chopped off at the elbow, and it just seems like a very horrible place to live. So I wouldn't want to live there. And so this is episode 100 of the podcast. I just want to take the opportunity to thank everyone who's listened, who's come along with me 
for the journey. I know there's some of you who've been with me since episode one, which is amazing. I did have some ideas for doing something a bit different, but then I thought, screw it, I've done a lot this week. So this will probably go long. So there you go. Super long episode. There's your treat. Episode 100. (laughs) Woohoo. So finally, I continue to post stuff on Patreon. I will no doubt start posting the new version of The Fool as I go through the chapters, get them closer to a final draft. So this will probably be a earlier version, a pre-edited, pre-beta reader version. So you'll be able to see what a terrible writer I am, really. And then, of course, I continue to post the Wasteland series. So the rewrite of Wizard of the Wasteland is going up. That's going up on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. When I start posting The Fool, I'll probably do it on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. And then, of course, there's the usual things of short stories. You get this podcast a day early you get other podcast episodes stuff that's not available anywhere else you know i've got some articles that i write about music and loads of different stuff so please do check that out you'll get a lot of value from it for one dollar a month so until next time cheerio (laughs) 